The so solo 3.0 for Warlocks have been 50-50 for the majority of players in game. On one hand, a lot of strong ability based builds have made Warlocks vary in whatever role they choose to pick from, from add clearing to boss DPS. On the other hand, many have said that the Warlocks got the weakest benefits compared to Titan and Hunters. Now, however you see this, the Warlocks are just as viable as they were when Void 3.0 came out, and they have a build that will be very handy for future use for all content. Cast Iron Amulets are a good passive exotic that does what the tin says, but when you apply the extra buffs to it, such as increased damage for you and your team, elemental wells, non stop healing, and near instant melee back, you can see that the exotic can offer us a lot when built right into its strengths, and that's where today's video will be aimed at. If you ever want to both heal and destroy things on a Doctor Strange tier level, then you'll want to follow this build down to a T. But you know what else doesn't split the community's opinions 50 50? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then I'd really appreciate a like, a sub, and for you to turn on your notifications as it goes a long way for me. So for the subclass, it will be using Daybreak and Well of Agents, depending on the activity and difficulty which has been offered. The build is a bit flexible in endgame content, so you can pick and choose what subclass you prefer without deviating too much. As a heads up, the build and a few other mini based builds for the Warlock will follow a almost certain pattern in terms of items being used, since most of the fragments are limited to differences. With cast lines, our role is pretty simple, and that is to keep the healing effect and others effects linked into the melee going, so we can do this non-stop and survive some awful level of damage. For this, you'll want the following, Touch of Flame allows solar grenades to last longer and emit blobs of lava around the perimeter. You'll then want Heat Rises where you can hover in the air for longer and glide and will grant you melee energy while in the air. For Fragments, you want Ember of Ashes so you can apply more Scorch to targets, Ember of Torches where powered melee hits against combatants make you and your allies radiant, Ember of Searing where Scorch targets grant melee energy back, and Ember of Benevolence where applying Restoration, Cure or Radiant to allies grant increased grenade, melee and class ability regen for a short duration. For stats, you'll want 17 resilience and recovery, 15 discipline, and 80 to 100 strength. We are going for a slightly all hands on deck approach for the build, so we can cover all angles in case we need more damage reduction or quick recovery over time. This can be tampered with as many times as you like, but shouldn't take away from the origin of the build. Now, key mods to have are Bountiful Well for plus 2 mods created, Melee Wellmaker for creating wells via charged melee. Font of Might for plus 25% solar weapon buff, Radiant Light for plus 20 in strength and additional adds, and World of Life for increased health regen over time. Back when Solar 2.0 was a thing, you would get a mini kill to activate Card Sound ability, and then get a self buff, which would then last until you get a charged mini kill again. Solar 3.0 has now changed that to where we can apply a Radiant effect to allies and ourselves and get an increase in mini regen over time, damage buff for all, and the health regen on top of each other. All of this allows players to either play as a team supporter or team paladin, who can dish out damage and still support others through the most simplest methods. We can easily fall into any of these roles as the weapons and grenades are there for us to pick. All we need to do is branch out to them and then you'll have your very own paladin or team supporter by the end of the day. Weaponry, we have the following. For primary, you have the Deliverance Fusion Rifle with Cornered and Chill Clip, and in the last video I did about the weapon, I mentioned that it's great with slowing adds down and allowing you to activate your ability in peace. That's pretty much the same for this build against Majors who can be quite tanky to take on at first, but once you apply Chill Clip and then MIDI, they become a lot more easier to dispatch. Make sure you grind for the Riptide Fusion Rifle which can easily drop from P3 matches and can also get a similar role without the need of doing raids. For secondary, we have the Death Adder SMG with Autoloan Holster and Dragonfly. A simple SMG I had in my vault for a while, it has come in handy when using my prime weapon a lot as I don't need to worry about reloading it so much, and Dragonfly is great with clearing up weaker minor combatants. Although Callus Mini Tool exists, I don't have a role with Incandescent yet, which would help the following build out in a few areas. Instead, I do have the Staccato 46 Scout Rifle with the perk, which has been useful in mid to long range content until I need to switch things up a bit. You can also look for a solo weapon that has Grave Robber as a perk, as that will give you the same effect as Auto Learn Holster, but on a more practical scale. This all depends on what you are after, to be fair. For Heavy, we have Gallahorn as combining the Radiant buff and for the Might buff together will give us a 56% damage buff for its duration, which is very strong for in-game foes. 
as this is easy to pull off, you can also add it into the weapon with high impact if you don't have the weapon just yet. Or alternatively, you could try the Eyes of Tomorrow rocket launcher if you have it, or even go with a heavy machine gun if you think. Now, to be honest, considering how much of a pain in the ass it is to get the following rocket launcher, I don't believe many of you have already got it, so go for the most easiest route available. For the stats, we want to invest into a little bit of everything so we can survive whatever is against us. I have said that both resilience and recovery are at 70 each, which is reasonable, but you can increase your resilience to 90 as well so you can gain that extra level of self-protection and be even more beefy on top of content. From here, this will be the same for Discipline, which is at 50, and does not need a lot of improvements as a lot of the work is being done via our melee. We do have Elemental Wells to keep this area afloat, but you can also add in the Bomber or Distribution mod if you want this area to be a bit more active than usual. You also have the Ember Blistering, where defeating the Battens with Solar Ignition grants grenade energy, and Impact Induction, which grants grenade energy back from melee attacks. Just keep in mind, you will be using your grenades on and off depending on if your melee connects or not. A strength now will need to be at least 80 to 100 for a much faster cooldown compared to everything else. As we do have Heat Rises, Ember Torches and Ember of Benevolence active on our subclass, the rest of the mods around this area just simply need to cover the back end in case things do fail. For this, I would advise you to have the Invigoration mod which will reduce your melee cooldown for each all power collected. Combine this with the Harmonic Siphon mod and you'll be able to keep your melee afloat even when you fail. Left over wise, we have Rocket Launcher Scavenger mod for extra reserve rockets, Revitalizing Blast where stunning champions will produce a miniature solar blast for extra damage, although this can be swapped out for Razor Precision mod which will allow you to ignite targets on solar weapon precision kills. Lastly, we have Solar Formation where ignitions do increase damage in an increased radius. Now as we have the bit covered, here are the mods all compiled in a list for quick viewing. For head, we have Resilience, Harmonic Siphon x 2 and Bound for Well mod, Arm, we have Discipline and Midi Wildmaker mod, Chest, we have Resilience, Arm of the Dying Sun, Cacus of Damner for the Might mod, Leg, we have Mind Resilience, Invigoration, Rocket Monster Scavenger and Radiant Light mod, Bond, we have Minor Strength, Solar Formation, Revitalize and Blast, and Well of Life mod. A amazing self buff and melee build that will have everything you want in terms of keeping yourself alive and others who stick near you. A lot of melee builds for Warlocks who have time based exotics rely heavily on making sure their charge ability works so they can pull off the given effects with ease. One issue with this is that once your charge melee is gone, you then have to wait for it to come back and then do it again. And though mods are out there to help this issue, it's not always the case with some exotics, especially if you miss. Castings are different though, as even when you don't have a charge melee on you, you can still activate it nonetheless. This makes having the exotic on hand viable for pretty much the majority of endgame content as it will help you stay alive even more. Applying solar 3.0 buffs to it has shown that going full melee and delving head first into it will benefit you no matter what your melee and how you go about it. What makes this good is that the charge melee will grant you a heap of buffs that will get your abilities back within seconds and even if you miss your attack, you can still get your energy back by simply using other means or better off just wait for it to passively come back. I wouldn't say that the build is strong enough for Grandmaster content unless it's something pretty straightforward with a good amount of minor combatants to take out. The heals and damage you get combined with Well of Radiance can definitely make a difference if updated a bit to have more defense added to it. I can see it being useful for certain GMs that are easy to do no matter what build are used. For now though, it greatly works in Master to below content and I have tried it out in a new dungeon just to see how well it responded. Thanks to the many combatants I faced, I was able to do pretty well with survival while dying to things that could have been easily avoided, more my error. Very pleased with the results either way and the style comes out, I can definitely see this game picked up by those who want a quick build that gives everything you need and go from there without so much hassle. So if this interests you, why not give it a try and see how it fares for yourself. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter keep up to date with Destiny content. If you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.